As with every new entry into a range of football boots, fans of the last model want to know, which is the better boot? So, with the launch of the Evo Power 1.2 earlier this week, we figured we'd take a look at how Puma's latest stacks up to its predecessor. Starting with the aesthetics, it's clear that the design team at Puma are feeling a little bit more confident in the identity that they want to give the Evo Power. The first edition was a clean looking boot, for sure, but there were some design touches that we weren't all that fond of, such as the lenticular holographic finish on the upper. Here on the 1.2, Puma have gone for a far more aggressive aesthetic, with the new AccuFoam layout giving the design team an excuse to give the shoe a high-tech, futuristic look. Sticking with the upper, Puma have definitely made some changes in this department. For starters, the Adaptlite upper on the first Evo Power had a very smooth, almost jelly-like feel in both hand and on foot, with the frictionless finish on the upper compensated for by how nice and soft and supple the upper is. Here on the 1.2, the Griptex finish on the shoe feels like it will give a much tackier, more traditional feel on the ball from the off, and is still remarkably soft and stretchable. That said, it is marginally less workable and supple than its predecessor. Looking at the AccuFoam padding in the upper, it's also clear that it's a lot less pronounced on the new Evo Power than it was on the first generation, with the 1.2 having a thinner layer, but more of it all across the boot. Finally, for changes on the top of the boot, the heel on the Evo Power 1.2 also undergoes a revamp, with the Achilles protector rising a little higher up the back of the foot. And it's also a little bit more rigid too, with Puma apparently engineering out the need for as soft of a crumple zone in the heel as it did on the first generation. The outsole of both Evo powers is more or less the same, with the gradual stability frame and traction plate intact. So, as you'd expect, the level of flex and bend that Puma say boosts shot power is still the same across both boots. Putting both boots on at the same time makes it really easy to appreciate the differences between both shoes. Whilst both versions of the Evo Power have a similar level of flex and bend in the sole plate, the upper on the first model is much more forgiving but on the 1.2, it feels vastly more supportive. The distinct impression that we get is that Puma have engineered the Evo Power 1.2 to be a much more stable football boot, which is no small feat considering the whole upper still has to stretch downwards. It's also obvious that Puma have worked to keep the fit the same, as both shoes have the same shape, meaning they're still a great choice for those who have wide feet. So, bottom line, the fit and the comfort of the Evo Power are as good as they ever were, along with the outsole. But the upper trades that smooth, jelly-feeling finish for a grippier, more textured version that also brings in much more support and the feeling of a lockdown fit. Something we've missed? Drop us a comment and we'll be sure to answer any questions you'd like to know on the differences between these two shoes. And, as always, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Google Plus with exclusive content, as well as daily boot news, views and equipment reviews over on footyboots.com.